I'm going to show a trick that I do to you today. Um, this is really a great trick that I use to keep my ionized water fresh no matter where I go, how long I want to store the ionized water. I can store it um, this way. And I. I'm really going to go out of my way here to do an enormous experiment which is going to take several days, maybe even weeks, uh, but just just little clip -its. So you might want to follow this as I go along. What I'm doing is I'm pouring ionized water. This is at level three, which is the level that I drink at. And I'm, I'm just, basically I'm going to switch switch containers here. I'm, I'm basically just first of all just pouring it into this container here and then I'm going to transfer it into these uh, mason jars. Now a mason jar, I have tested every single kind of container possible. Every kind. I went out and bought every kind of water container that you can have expensive ones, cheap ones. I've tried reusing soda bottles or various other bottles that water bottles that I got from the store and various things like that. I'm going to stop talking for a minute and just show you what I'm doing. I overfilled this and hopefully you can see that there's a little dome here. When you overfill slowly you, you create this little dome because water has a good surface tension and, and will actually dome up before it before the water drips off the sides. So when I stick this lid, mason jar lid on, it's going to spill out over the sides. You, you might have been able to see that on the video, I'm not sure. Alright, so now it's got the smallest air bubble possible in this jar. That's very desirable for maintaining your pH and your ORP, but especially your ORP. Alright, so now I'm just kind of carefully screwing the lid on, trying not to mess with my water bubble in there. And I'll, I'll basically, I'll, I'll show you, hold on one second. I'm just going to uh, switch back to uh, the other container here for a second. <laughs> now, um, I'll show you what the bubble size is. Whoa, boy did I do a good job that. That is the teeniest, tiniest little bubble. You might not even be able to see it. But that's it. It's just a tiny little water bubble. And that's very desirable because the uh, high, the negatively charged electrons, which is the simplest antioxidant in the universe, basically, um, are, are gaseous. They will, they will evaporate. And if you, if you use a plastic container, they'll not only evaporate in the air bubble, but they will literally just come out the pores of your container. Now, a mason jar is very thick glass, and it's got a rubber sealed lid. And um, I, I'm not sure what this white material is, but it's all food grade. This is used for canning, jarring, and things like that. So it's a very, very good quality jar, but very inexpensive. I literally um, bought these at Walmart. I hate to advertise where I go do my shopping, but anyway, that I bought them for like ten dollars for twelve, twelve a set of twelve. So they are very expensive. Now, what I will do when I'm going to go somewhere, I'll take a beach bag or some kind of carry bag and I'll just stick like four of these jars just lined up touching each other in there and then I'll have like a gallon basically worth of water and that, that'll last me close to a day. Now, I, I obviously you're not going to drink your water from a... Um, you know, a, a, a mason jar. So I just use a, I just also bought a little drinking jug. It's it's basically the same size. It, it holds the same amount of water and has a lid with a top on it. And I, I will just pour it from one jar. You know, I'll open the jar when I'm ready to 
to drink the water, I'll just open the jar and just kind of pour it. And sometimes I'll drink the first, you know, ounce off the top before I pour it just to keep myself from spilling. But it just fills into that other jar. <laughs> and this one, uh, believe it or not, cost a couple of bucks at Walmart just for one of them. So, and the lid actually broke off this morning, but it has a lid that is watertight. So I can just take that with me and stick that in my bag as well and drink from that and then have my stored water here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what this water is coming in at and I'll show you over the course of the next month or, or a couple of weeks anyway. Um, I'll do video clips to show you what what the uh, stored water is coming in at. Because the stored water, uh, usually stored ionized water, this, the uh, alkaline ionized water does not maintain its pH or ORP very well at all. And um, so we're, hold on one second, let that settle down a little bit. So this is coming in at a 9.2 pH approximately, a little bit higher actually than that. And um, you know, I'm going to probably let this settle down a little bit more um, because it's still rising. But it's close to a negative 800 ORP, which is uh, the reason why I like the Athena so well is it gets you that high ORP. So uh, the ORP is very high. Um, I'm saying negative 800 here is what I'm seeing. And then also the pH is a pretty high pH, 10 here, or 10.1. So basically, over time, we'll see a little bit of drop from those figures. Um, but we won't, uh, these jars are amazing in that they do not, uh, like have much of a drop. So anyway, uh, that's all I'm going to show you for now is this, this is the starting point and I'm going to continue to fill up about 12 of these jars or I might even do 24 of them just so that over the course of time I can open one a day and test it and show you what one more day worth of waiting has done to the process. <laughs> so we'll see if this, uh, it might get kind of boring after a while. I might, might not test 24 <laughs> little <laughs> days in a row, but I will do some testing into the future to show you what the um, outcome is in the future. And just Go to my blog and check out the article that I write concerning this so that you can uh, see the, the whole results over the whole course of time. This likely, if you're seeing this on YouTube or something, it's likely that you're not going to be, uh, you're, you'll come in and see one video and uh, you might want to see the whole series. And usually what I do is I won't just post, I'll post all the videos there in the one spot, but I'll also usually post conclusions, summaries, charts, and various things so that you can speed up your browsing time by seeing the results very quickly. Okay? Thank you.